Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Garrett Schmidt, and I am the managing editor for VBC Exhibit Hall. And I'd like to welcome you all to today's live webinar hosted by Proficient Health. And it is titled Technology Trends That Put the Patient First and Bridge the Interoperability Gap. And uh, it's a really important topic. I'm very excited to hear um, uh, more about this today, and I think we have a, a great presentation in store for you today. So uh, a few items of note before we get started. Uh, this is a typical webinar format, so everyone has joined in listen-only mode. You don't need to worry about uh, muting your microphones or, or turning off your camera. We can't see you, I promise. Um, during the webinar also, uh, we are recording it. So want to let you know that after we're done what's going to happen is i'm going to send everyone who's registered a uh, a link to the recording and it's also where you'll be able to download the slides from today's presentation uh so a couple hours uh probably after the presentation you should be receiving an email from me uh and then finally uh we do want to hear from you during the presentation so we're going to have some time for q a towards the end so at any time during the presentation, you don't have to wait until then. You can go ahead and ask your question earlier. Uh, you will be able to ask a question using your control module. There's a little questions uh, area on that. So it's not the chat, it's different. It's right where it says questions. So go ahead and ask your question there. We'll get to it as many as we can uh, today. And uh, and that's it. Without further ado, wanted to introduce our speaker today. It's Mr. Jeff Kramer, and he is the Chief Technology Officer and Head of Product with Proficient. So welcome, Jeff. Uh, thanks, Garrett. Uh, good afternoon, and I'm happy to be here today to look and look forward to walking through the presentation with you. I've been working at Proficient Health uh, and a predecessor company on this journey for going on seven years. So, um, again, happy to be here. Um, in our agenda today, we're going to focus on uh, technology trends regarding interoperability with a specific focus on how these impact the patient. Uh, in the context of this presentation, um, it's, it's really in the context of an ACO or CAN, an organization that's group of doctors or hospitals, other healthcare providers who work together to provide uh, value-based care. And my company, Proficient Health, has significant expertise in this space. Our focus as a company is on enabling seamless patient referrals for ACOs, CINs, and health systems. And we're going to reflect on some of our experiences uh, later on in the presentation. So to start out with, we thought we would take a, a, a step back and look at you know, how um, healthcare industries, specifically referral management, relates to other industries. And you know, think about uh, the state of the art today, how you interact with you know, industries on the left, book a flight, get a ride, get an, order a meal, order almost anything you want online. Um, book a hotel room or a vacation rental versus how how you book how you get a referral today and you know immediate interactions are the norm um, yet within the healthcare industry you need to either make and or wait for a call so um, that's the context we're going to talk about you know some of the challenges behind this but if you look at it from a consumer point of view consumers really want transparency uh, in terms of you know what they're doing their referral and they also want control they want to be able to do things on their own so that's a lofty goal um, what we're going to talk about challenges um, associated behind the scenes as well and then some tr you know, industry trends in technology interop interop interoperability as well as patient engagement and finally close with um, you know a summary so uh, without further ado we're going to get into uh, challenges and effects of you know in, in healthcare technology today. So um, some of the challenges, um, you know, there are a lot of moving parts behind the scenes. So I can say, you know, there's a nice little app to book a, a ride, but when we talk about referral, referral management, there are, there are a lot of complexities uh, behind that. You have PCPs, specialists, you know, health systems, ACOs, payers that all have to work together on a patient referral and some of these entities have a common ownership structure some actually may even be on the some uh, same emr system some emrs you know do a, a better job some of the larger ones do a better job of sharing data than smaller emrs however you know smaller emrs a lot of pcps typically are maybe on you know tier two emrs and that leaves data trapped in silos and when you look at the flows that have to happen here 
in order to map out, uh, make the whole process seamless, you really need you know, bi-directional um, uh, exchange of data throughout the process. So think about the process, the referral, you know, sends uh, a referral, the PCP sends a referral, um, the specialist gets the referral, schedules the patient appointment, specialist sees the patient, specialist attaches follow-up notes uh, sent back, you know, by the PCP. And again, this is where you get into some interoperability challenges because, you know, interoperability is hard. And then you get into situations where, well, this tier two EMR maybe doesn't ex accept a base 64 encoded document over HL7. So if you send something to this practice, you need to use this alternate method to be able to deliver the document. So what ends up happening is you have multiple workflows behind the referral depending on the specific EMR um, and technology vendor. So, I mean, those are some of the some of the challenges and it goes without saying that, you know, the, the one thing that's a little different about referrals than the, all the icons on the left side of the previous chart is that it takes multiple, you know, companies, um, entities working together um, to to seamlessly coordinate a refer referral, which is, you know, again, more challenging than maybe some of the other um, situations like booking a ride or, or even, even ordering something online. So the effects of this are um, getting a referral scheduled can be hard, and very hard. Um, patients aren't able to engage. So you know, again, if your process is that you either call in or you wait for somebody to call you, that can be you know, frustrating. And then also there are admin burdens um, that referral coordinators have you know, in these entities that can get in the way of patients being scheduled in a timely manner. And again, when, if you look at uh, an ACO or you, if you look at a specialist uh, practice, uh, PCP you know, sending a referral, you know, again, the more derivations you have on that referral, uh, the more admin burdens and for the referral coordinators, and that results in delays in scheduling the patient and also delays in the patient being you know, getting an appointment to be seen. You know, I have a personal example of this myself. I recently moved across the country, had a colonoscopy for my old specialist practice in North Carolina that's due in Q4. Of course, I started seeing a new PCP and you know hadn't closed the loop with them, but they were calling me to schedule this colonoscopy. Of course, I no longer live there, so I was just trying to get back to them to close the loop. Of course, I work during the day, and you know, the only way is a voicemail. You know, I don't want to leave a voicemail because I don't want to leave PHI on the phone. Um, and the net result is, I, and there wasn't any kind of alternate way to get rid, get a hold of them. There wasn't a way online, so I still haven't closed the loop uh, with with them. I, I guess they assume that I don't need a colonoscopy anymore. But you know, that's a personal example of of some of the challenges uh, in this space. So. Key points here in summary, clinical referrals are complex. There's a lot of moving pieces. You know, unlike other industries, multiple entities need to work together to coordinate a referral. And the effects, um, net effects are difficulty in getting referral appointments scheduled and ultimately delays in scheduling and, and patients being seen. So next we're gonna go talk about some of the trends um, in healthcare IT, we're going to talk about first about patient or interoperability, technology interoperability trends, and then we're also going to move on and talk about some patient engagement trends as well. So, um, from a technology and interoperability point of view, you know, there's kind of a, a, a stack that's that's built here in terms of you know the types of things that are are in place, uh, you know, from a Base and a tech point of view, obviously, been a lot of talk about the cloud. I think the key point here is that um, in order for you know in, to to adopt uh, EHR changes in a timely manner, I mean having a cloud strategy for the EHRs in, in the health systems is actually a really important trend. I think a lot of people have embraced this, and of course, there's cloud and cloud adjacent strategies, but the key point is that that is kind of having a cloud strategy is, is pretty much table stakes, uh, you know, to building you know a modern infrastructure that you know receives updates in a, in a timely manner, 
um, and, and is an underpinning for the things that are built on top of it. You know, and when you talk about, you know, other, you know, there's, there's multiple components involved with that. Obviously, you know, the EHR and the interface engine are, you know, kind of the, the building blocks. Then you have, you know, some of the interoperability standards on top of that, HL7, you know, previously now FHIR is an improved standard. It allows interoperability with healthcare data uh, using more of a modern REST API kind of technology. And there's a key part of this is a data model for exchange accessing healthcare related objects. And you know, this has gotten a lot of traction in patient facing use cases and allowing third party you know, apps to access PHI data. There's also been some legislation involved around this as well. Um, and then moving up the stack, you know, it's one thing to interoperate. So with, with HL7 or FHIR, you can actually you know, talk about a specific object like a referral or a document associated with it, but that doesn't um, really encompass the whole process. So 360X is really focused around using standardized interfaces and ultimately you know, developing a set of profiles that can be used for sharing information in specific contexts. So one of the contexts is a closed loop referral and they actually, you know, the, the standard has identified both, you know, underlying HL7 and direct messaging, you know, technology uh, to be leveraged, you know, in, in conjunction with the closed loop referral process. Again, helping the overall interoperability and helping disparate systems to be able to interoperate better, you know, in that context. And then finally, the next layer up on the stack, more of an application type uh, layer thing is the qualified health um, information networks. And these are uh, emerging. Um, some of the EMRs are embracing this context. Um, these, these will build typically you know, in the process of building on top of buyer uh, constructs, but you can do application level things like this patient discovery, um, querying a document, retrieving a document or message delivery are being mapped out as part of this initiative. And again, this is more of a application level uh, type type standard that leverages underlying some of the underlying technology. So again, we are building up you know layers here um, in the stack from an interoperability point of view. However, there's one other important thing that needs to be considered here, and that is the patient. So we can talk about again, we can get all these EMR and you know, PCP EMR, specialist EMR, get all these things connected. But, you know, all these things can be working together, but we still can't seamlessly um, coordinate a referral. So, you know, and, and of course, there are some important trends in patient engagement as well. You know, and that's one of the things that we've seen with, with our customers as well is, you know, uh, the overwhelming desire of patients to get more involved in the process, have more transparency and have more control. So, you know, I guess, you know, when you talk about the trends here, there's a 20, 2017 study from the University of Oregon had some really interesting results when it comes to patient engagements. You know, actively engaged patients are nine times more likely to feel like their treatment plans reflected their values, four and a half times more likely to tolerate side effects, and three times more likely to initiate a healthier diet. So, those are really significant. So I think the net here is that engaged patients, you know, are healthier patients. Some of the trends that we're seeing here are, you know, when you talk about um, consumerism, you know, information is available online. People are able to look up their healthcare plans online, see what's covered, what's not, who's in network, who's out of network, and make decisions, you know, uh, on you know, on their care based on that. Um, provider to um, patient communication. So a lot of the EMRs have um, Epic as my chart where you're able to communicate with your physician. A lot of these EMRs have uh, that that type of uh, interaction, which is actually, you know, I think becoming more of the norm um, these days. And then of course, when you talk about, you know, automation, self-scheduling. So being able to schedule your own appointment, um, virtual assistant. So having a chat help uh, kind of approach, uh, mobile payments, and also having online you know, education regarding you know, procedure you might be having for um, you know, 
after effects of you know, um, procedure that you've had or you know what to expect after. So, and I've got a personal example of this as well, um, of patient engagement and how it has affected me personally. So, my old dentist back in North Carolina, when I needed to schedule my next appointment, would give me a little card. It would say, "Hey, six months out, one you know noon to one on a Wednesday, you schedule me an appointment." Okay, great. Here's your card. Of course, if, if I had the patience to sit there and put it on my calendar, but I never did, I'd throw it in my pocket, and of course I forget about it, and then it gets thrown in the washer, and I don't know when my appointment is, and you know it's uh, it's kind of a mess, or something else gets scheduled on top of it. So my new dent my new dentist, uh, I actually had to have some work done, so I had three separate procedures over the last eight weeks, and I signed up, and I gave them my email address and you know, cell phone for text. And when I had my first appointment, they reminded me ahead of time, which was kind of cool. And then when I came to schedule uh, the follow-up, they gave me a little card, I guess, that's just for trans or con continuance, but uh, they actually sent me an email, or sent me a calendar invite. So it went on my personal Gmail calendar. Wow, this is really cool. It's on my calendar. I don't have to do any extra work to worry about this. And then before and again, they sent me a, a patient reminder. So again, for me, it's uh, it was really key, um, or it was really made me feel um, better, less hassle with having to worry about things, less less chance of something falling through the cracks. So key points here: patient want you know want patients want transparency and control over their care. Um, engaged patients tend to be happier patients. Um, but I think, you know, the, the thing is, you talk about technology and interoperability, you talk about patient engagement, you say, okay, well, Jeff, here's this patient engagement stuff, we're just going to do that as an ACO. You know, it's not really uh, an either or, you can't just do one or the other, you need to do both, they feed into each other. And, you know, for our customers, you know, patient experience, you know, needs to be a, you know, our, our you know, basically a conclusion after talking with a lot of people is patient experience needs to be a key consideration in the design of the referral management process. So next we're going to move on and we're going to talk about you know, a checklist for um, improved patient referrals again based on our experience uh, with our customers. So the first thing is we need patient-centric technology um, to enable self-scheduling and transparency. Uh, I guess, you know, you can look at this from a, a couple different perspectives here. I think there's actually a dual win here when you talk about self-scheduling because, you know, with the state of healthcare, referral coordinators are overworked and there's, you know, they have their processes that they do. But, you know, ultimately, if the patient, you know, engaging or the self-scheduling makes the patient happier, reduces workload on the referral coordinator. Seems like actually a dual win, um, you know, if, if done right. So, you know, that's one of our, our conclusions and you know, we're actually gonna be introducing, you know, patient uh, engagement solution as part of our, uh, you know, referral management platform through, through partnership. I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but I think there's definitely an opportunity for a double whammy, a dual win, patients uh, get, the schedule their own appointments and also referral coordinators have to do less work. Um, also, you know, people, you know, getting communications about their appointment helps engage them in their care. Um, and it's also, it's also important to meet the patients where they live through methods they prefer. So basically, you know, you can pick email, you can pick text, you can pick what you want, but if you can engage them, you know, with uh, a mechanism they're familiar with, it you're going to be a much, um, you know, better off overall. And and ultimately, as we've said, engaged patients tend to be happier patients. Um, the second uh, key item is having a single system-wide uh, referral workflow. So, again, we talked about some of the challenges earlier you know, when you have multiple EMRs. And you know, you, there's several ways that this single workflow can be accomplished. I guess if you're, you know, in a situation where you have, um, you know, control over the vendors, you know, you might be able to, to use a single vendor to do this. However, um, in, our, in our experience, you know, a lot of these ACOs, our ACO customers, have 35 or 40 
you know, different EMRs involved, you know, from the PCP, you know, to the, all the way to the specialist. So I really don't think, you know, it doesn't really seem like it's going to be ready. It's not reality, you know, for these, for these large ACOs. And, and that really leads us to, you know, kind of the te a technology agnostic view, you know, is important, but, you know, I guess, again, that leads us to uh, companion solutions, you know, an EHR companion to help provide the referral management, uh, complete referral management solution. So we actually provide a referral management platform today, and our solution facilitates a single referral process. Uh, it's easy to use for referral coordinators. It integrates with PCP and specialist EMRs to reduce duplication of effort. It has a comprehensive provider directory of practices across all networks, as well as practices that aren't associated with the network. And it also provides a comprehensive set of reporting for uh, at a practice level, specialty level, or and also the overall network level for tracking uh, KPIs. So again, this is a, a case where you have all these EMRs and you're not able to, you know, basically, you know, getting them all to interoperate is is really not going to happen. So, you know, a companion solution can be really helpful to to solve that problem and also pr to provide additional visibility into the data. So, uh, we're going to talk more about that in um, the case studies uh, coming up here. But um, it, we were able last year we deployed a large ACO and we were able to get a entire community live in 90 days. Um, giving visibility back to the referring provider, um, you know, including consult notes. So uh, again, that that'll, that'll be you know fleshed out, if shown in in the case studies. But that's an example of how a companion solution can can work in, in this type of environment. Also, you know, another point here is that um, patient engagement. So you know, we have worked with our our customers and you know concluded that you know, patient engagement, you know, self-scheduling, you know, has to be, you know, it's, it's an integral part of an effective referral management uh, process. And we are working, we, we have a solution we'll be rolling out by a partnership over the next couple of weeks. And um, you'll, you'll see a press release on that, but uh, we're, we're working on, currently working on, you know, integrating our referral management, you know, platform with this, you know, third party to, actually provide this type of capability and again we I believe that you know for, for us improving the referral you know be in, very instrumental in referral or in improving the referral management process in in the future for for us and our, our customers so as we discussed you know it's not really about one thing it's not like patient engagement or interoperability you kind of need a balanced attack you know, single system-wide referral workflow supported by underlying um, interoperable technology is important. Engaging patients and providing transparency and control is important. And, you know, I guess the challenge for all of us here is that multiple companies need to work together to, to make this happen. So, again, this is an additional challenge we get to deal with being in, in the healthcare industry, but, you know, something that we're working on and it's it's just a fact of life and it's something that we need to work through with our customers. So with that, we're gonna get into the case studies. The first case study is with UNC Health. Um, UNC Health is a set of specialty practices um, you know, for one of our ACO clients. They use Epic as their EMR. And we integrated, and we were actually providing a standard you know, specialist interface you know by hl7 we integrated that into epic including referral creation patient scheduling and resulting consult notes and this allows specialists to continue to do their work in epic while our referral management platform provides a connection back to the aco network so the referring provider pcp is kept apprised throughout the process and the, the results uh, were decreased time to appointment and improved care coordination. Uh, so this is something that you know has rolled out a few months ago, and we've been seeing you know very good results with. Um, secondly, we have um, Wake Key Community Care WKCC. 
they were previously on an older version of the or a referral management platform from another vendor. Uh, they didn't have access to real-time data or the ability to understand why the referrals were leaking out of network. In implementing our referral management system, Companion Solution gave them the ability to understand referral patterns. Um, they used to have to wait for claims data, things like who's sending out of network and why, uh, how long does it take to get patients scheduled based on status, and also lets them track on how they're doing on the KPIs, uh, overall network KPIs, and uh, how all you know, each practice is doing against those KPIs as well. And thirdly, we have uh, Triad Healthcare Network. Again, they have 40, over 40 EMRs in the network. Our referral management platform provides an EHR companion uh, to deliver referrals. We have bi-directional communications. Um, this has helped them get you know, sch patients scheduled quickly. We've created an online um, network of providers from Greensboro uh, to Raleigh, connecting 10,000 providers, um, 1,000 practices, and is delivering uh, 800 referrals today. So those are some very significant numbers in the grand scheme of things, and you know the, the type of effect you can see you know, with a, an EHR companion solution in a in a large ACO. So in in summary, there's been a lot of advances in technology that have helped improve uh, the referral process, but there's a lot of work left to do. Solutions need to be more interoperable. Solutions need to be easy to use, and solutions need to facilitate a closed loop process. I mean, ease of use is actually absolutely critical. One of the things that we see is that if a solution isn't easy to use, it's not adopted, and if your solution isn't adopted, it's not going to be successful. So that is one of the key things that, that we, we focus on you know, with our referral management platform. Interfaces with discrete data also help eliminate duplicate work between systems uh, in the referral management flow. So, you know, discrete data means you know you're, you're calling out the in, you know, elements individually versus hey, I'm going to send you a PDF and you go figure it out. So, um, and that's what we did with um, with the uh, our specialist interface uh, with the you know, start, starting with BMC, but it is a standard interface we're also implementing with other uh, practices as well. Um, and really, you know, with all the technology issues, ACOs and CNs, we need to consider um, focus on patient engagement as well as self-service and transparency. They're, they're key to success moving forward. And, you know, this can all look very daunting, but incremental enhancements are, are key to the process and are helpful at all levels. Um, we have a roadmap for our uh, referral management platform. And we also, you know, work closely with our customers to chart our path. We also recommend that ACO and CN customers have a roadmap to their referral workflows, and we're we're happy to get involved, you know, as appropriate with that to to help with that process. So that's um, old processes can be hard to change, but again, there's, we need a balanced attack that includes both technology and interoperability. Um, goals as well as uh, transparency and control. Um, you know, old, old processes are hard to change, but, you know, balanced attack is, you know, is helpful to counteract that. So next we'll move on to take questions. Garrett, I'll turn it back over to you for that. All right. Um, well, well, this was a great presentation, and we do have some questions that came in. And just kind of as a reminder, uh, if you do have any questions that you would like to submit, uh, you can do so using your control module. It has there's actually an area for questions specifically there. So we're going to dive in uh, to a few of these uh, with the time that we have remaining, and in no particular order here. Um, the first question is, uh, let's see here, is how have uh, you seen success incentivizing participation with new technology? Uh, that's a that's a great question, Garrett. We we have definitely seen uh, success um, with um, incentivizing participation, but you know a couple of points. We're talking about you know technology with referral management systems. 
the most successful clients, you know, mandate practices use specific technology. Uh, but, you know, I guess getting back to what I said earlier, the technology needs to be easy to use to be adopted. So if you have easy to use technology uh, that, that can be adopted and, you know, basically having the, um, the, the incentives, you know, require that, you know, has worked out very well, you know, for, for our clients. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, Next question here is, uh, how do you enable better provider access across the network? So that's that's another great question. We provide a comprehensive provider directory that shows practices and physicians across the networks. Um, providers uh, from different networks are allowed to communicate with, the, with, with each other using both online and offline methods. And if you send a referral out of network, we require um, a reason to track why that has occurred and that's rolled up for reporting purposes. So, I mean, here's the thing. The reality is you could say, I never ever want to send a referral out of network, but the, the, the fact of the matter is there are actual cases for doing that, you know, and, and we basically allow the communications, obviously we give preference for in-network, you know, providers, but if there is a reason, you're also able to send it out of network. And that basically gives you know, full access to all providers and providers that aren't in the same network are still able to communicate online using our referral management platform, even if they're they're not in, in the network, as long as they're on a platform. Okay, wonderful. Um, next question here is, uh, how do you decide where to invest in major technologies versus where to add specialty workflows to what you currently have? So do you have do you wait for Epic to uh, or or bring in specialty provider for tech, etc.? Yeah, so I think for for us, you know, we we focus in that that that's really more of an ACO question. But our our goal is to provide options. So we we provide a companion solution that can be used to do, to deliver you know, a, a number of different specialties. You know, and that could be an option if you want to introduce a new specialty. You could provide it through a companion solution. You know, our strategy is also to integrate with Epic, but in theory, you could, or uh, EHR, you could provide it using our companion solution. But we're not, it's not up to us to mandate that. It's, you know, we provide options. You know, ultimately, the ACO needs to decide, you know, what they want to do. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, uh, after initial adoption, who manages the vendor relationship? Uh, continue training, et cetera, and how do you keep training from being a one-time event? Yeah, so we, we provide uh, our strategy with our referral management platforms. We provide an assigned account manager as well as a client success manager uh, to work with the client on an ongoing basis. So, you know, we, we do training initially. You know, we also have a set of, you know, kind of general training sessions scheduled throughout the year. Um, so, People are able to sign up for those, or if there's any kind of specialty needs, um, you know, we can set up, you know, one-off requests for that. But you know, our strategy is that we train the people, you know, train the, the team initially, but ultimately there will be new people coming on board, you know, and you know, again, we have periodic trainings, you know, that are that can be signed up for in addition to the, the training at the beginning, and again, periodic engagement, you know, with a client success management and account management to ensure account success. Great, great. Uh, well, actually, guys, that, that is all the questions that we had come in. Um, so we have sort of an abbreviated session today, but actually this, this has been really wonderful. I know I've gotten a lot out of it and I, I hope that uh, you all have too. Um, as we close out, uh, first of all, I, I wanna thank you, Jeff. This was a, a fantastic presentation and thought this was very engaging. Um, and I, I, again, as, as we close, I wanted to encourage you all to stop by the virtual exhibit booth at bbcexhibithall.com. It, it is a great resource where you can connect with their team, uh, the proficient team. You can look at different resources they have uh, and, and uh, what they're doing in the value-based care space. Uh, also at, at bbcexhibithall.com, there's a lot of great resources and a whole resource library uh, on a variety of different topics. And that's also where this webinar is going to be housed. So the recording of this webinar uh, is going to be available there in the library. But 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send it uh, to you as well. So everyone that's registered today, whether in attendance or just registered, uh, I'm going to send an email with a link to the recording as well as to a place where you can download the slides. Uh, and I uh, hope that uh, you'll be able to share it with colleagues and, and review it at will. And then finally, again, I wanted to thank you all uh, for, for joining us uh, today. And if you would like to reach out to the Proficient team or for, to Jeff specifically, uh, feel free to reach out here. Uh, his email is, is on this final slide, and or you can feel free to reach out to me as well. I'm happy to facilitate an introduction. But I uh, wanted to thank you all for spending the afternoon with us. I uh, hope that you have a wonderful rest of your weeks and a great upcoming holiday. Have a good night.